You know what I did all day today? Spent the whole day baking cookies. And you know, it's a lot like an engineering project, actually. You have your basic design, your bill of materials, a whole design flow with many steps and dependencies. Then you are ready for fabrication. You pop them all in the oven so they'll be perfect and warm just at the right serving time. And smell that? Mmm, they are finally ready to... <laughs> what? Oh, man, I just realized that back at step one, I grabbed the salt instead of the sugar. It sure would be nice if I'd known that five hours and eight batches ago. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Ever discover a bug in your HDL way too late? Wouldn't it be cool if something would have caught that error right when it happened? Yeah, I think so too. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Scott Bloom from Blue Pearl is showing us how Blue Pearl's HDL creator can help not bake a bunch of very salty cookies. Or maybe catch your HDL bugs earlier in the design process. Yeah, you'll thank me later. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find more information about Blue Pearl's HDL creator. Hi, Scott. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. So, for my audience who may not know, what is Blue Pearl all about? Blue Pearl is a leading provider of RTL analysis, debug, CDC, and SDC generation. We're in use around the world for FPGAs, ASIC, and IP design. We have verification teams around the world using our tools. The main goal is to find and fix problems before you run synthesis, before you run simulation, and not in the lab, most importantly, for FPGAs. Okay. You can improve your timing using our tool through the structural and formal analysis checks that we do. And we can actually generate constraints so that your false paths and multi-cycle paths are accurately found without you guessing what they are. And with our CDC analysis, we can help you eliminate your metastability issues in your design. Excellent. Okay, so we're here to talk about HDL Creator. But first, why did you guys create HDL Creator? The dream for HDL Creator really started almost a quarter century ago. I was working at a previous company, and we really wanted to give immediate feedback as you're developing your RTL for the problems you're going to have. In a similar manner at the time, Microsoft Word had just come out with grammar checking. The problem was with grammar checking, it goes one sentence at a time. For HDL analysis, you really need to do the whole file, if not the whole design. And you couldn't do that in the background in a short enough amount of time to get results that were meaningful. Sure. So HDL Creator is just a portion of the overall verification picture here, right? Correct. There are many things that you don't need to run simulation and synthesis for to find issues. You don't need to run simulation to find all your FSM issues. In fact, you can't run simulation unless you're always updating your test benches. Simulation only tests what you tell it to. Sure. If your test bench doesn't include the new FSM that an engineer just added, it's not going to get tested. Yeah. Running linting will run every FSM in the design. For synthesis, it assumes you're correct. Its goal is to make hardware. Yeah. Most engineers, when they're running synthesis, ignore a fair share of the messages coming out there. What we try to do is provide at the linting level and now at the real time as you type level, accurate feedback that is filterable so that you can focus on what's really crucial to you at the time in a manner that provides data and feedback before you go to simulation and didn't test it there. Right. And before you synthesize it and ignore it there. Yeah. And then find it and have to try and debug it in the lab. Let's talk about that linting, which you said HDL creator can make cleaner. Now I'm intrigued. What is that all about? So the best analogy is years back, people didn't have spell checkers. Sure. So you would have to try and find every misuse and every misspelling in your document that you're producing. Yeah. Then you would hand it off to your editor who would really find every grammatical and spelling error that you had. Yeah. Then there was a huge jump forward. There was spell check put into word processors and you would type everything as you go and then you'd hit spell check mode. And you'd go through word by word that it couldn't find in its dictionary. Then there was a huge step forward and they did spell checking as you type. And all of a sudden, everyone forgot how to spell. <laughs> That's true. Because now it's done for you. And the biggest complaint is, 
I can't find the right word. So you change the word you're using that it will do. Right. So it could find the word for you Mm -hmm. because it didn't know the garbage you typed in. It couldn't find a word that matched. (laughs) Well, with RTL creation and HDL creation, HDL is more than just what's synthesizable. It's also your test bench. Yeah. So HDL Creator supports test bench level as well as synthesizable code. It would be great as you type to know this isn't going to be synthesizable. Or as you type along, hey, you might have a language mismatch with a language other than what you're coding in. Yeah. Very few designs are pure system Verilog or pure VHDL. So it's nice to get feedback immediately. Hey, you're using a keyword from another language. Sure. Yeah. You might have coding standards that are 100% syntactically correct, but the boss said, no, you will not do this. For instance, in VHDL, you might have a process block that's unlabeled. Okay. Nothing wrong with that, but- that's your coding style for your company. Getting those coding styles accurate as you type are critical. Yeah. And one of the things that's come out in our speaking with verification engineers around the world is many of the issues they fix are what I like to call silly bugs. Okay. Not the edge detection doesn't work in a small, you know, color change where it's gray one to gray two and it couldn't find the edge. Yeah. That's a corner case verification that the verification engineer is invaluable to finding. It's more like, well, you're not following our coding standard. So the verification engineer winds up fixing that. Mm, True. Or you use the wrong type of assignment, a blocking assignment versus a non-blocking assignment, and you happen to not hit that in simulation and see the issue that it brought forth. So you get the verification engineer doing things that are silly bugs, and they're cut and paste over and over again, but real-time analysis finds it as you type, so you stop doing it. Gotcha. Okay, so let's dive into the actual editing page. Scott, what does that look like? Well, very much just an editor, and that's the goal. I can't convince someone who's a VI user to run Emacs or vice versa. Yeah. The only way you can get someone to make a change with their editor is to provide more functionality that goes beyond editing. So we have a very powerful editor using industry standard usage model that provides all the editing power you need from bookmarking, brace matching, smart commenting, block commenting, folding of areas of your code, all the things you've just come to expect from an editor. Cool. Okay. That's the base. And we could spend the rest of our talk going over just the editor power. The problem with that is it's just come to be expected for an editor. Sure. What we've gone beyond just the base editor is we have the full Blue Pearl linting system full parsing, VHDL, System Verilog, Verilog, with all the options that we give the user to load their design being run in the background. And on top of that, we have over a 100 structural checks that check to make sure your design is following correct standards, as well as not creating bad hardware. Sure. We have these 100 or so structural checks, and that number of checks is constantly increasing. A lot of it's limited by our desire to make sure that as you type, you get real-time feedback. If we were to run analysis that takes too long, you wouldn't get feedback quick enough for it to be of much value. Sure. Okay. So, Scott, I have a question. Do you have to have your design in a project? No. One of the things that we've done is worked very hard to make it as easy as possible to just use HDL Creator on an individual file. Okay. The reason for that is we don't want to force people to use HDL Creator as a cockpit. We want people to be able to just double click on a file and have it open up and it be effective. Yeah. For languages such as VHDL and System Verilog that have external packages, you have to be able to load those packages in before you can use what the package file contains. Sure. VHDL and System Verilog packages is very much defined before use. So we've given the user the ability to set up their system so that you can tell it where the packages are and will automatically find them. Very cool. Okay, Scott, let's take this bad boy out for a spin. So what we're showing here is HDL Creator open to a typical bit of VHDL. Now, we're showing the real-time analysis, and we're also going to show how quickly it gives you feedback to errors due to spelling, mistakes, or typos. In this case, it happened to be standard logic with an extra C. 
and you'll see how quickly it updates in the background. Now, what we're going to show down here is we have a message that is an unnamed process block. This is not something that's syntactically wrong. This is purely a coding style by your boss. And when we change it, you'll see it gives a different issue that says int is actually tied to a different language. So we fix it to, in this case, Bob, so that we don't get that message. And you'll see we still have an unnamed process block elsewhere. Now, we even get something when we run it where you get more than one statement on a line. Things that are not syntactically wrong, but it allows the verification engineer not to have to fix your silly bugs. Excellent. All right. So let's move on over from editing to analysis. Now, Scott, what else beyond editor has HDL Creator brought to the party? So editing is an important part. RTL and HDL creation is what we do as hardware engineers. However, it's also important to be able to analyze and learn how your project works as a whole. Sure. Where your code is distributed. So one of the things we've created is the source lines of code view. So it can tell you not just where your lines of code are distributed in your design, but also what types of lines of code they are. Okay. You could also filter it to include the comments or not, so you can see where the real meat of your design is, so that you're not distracted by the 10,000 lines of check-in comments. Yeah. Now, this gives you a really good understanding of how much of your design is IP as well? Hmm. Because no one today starts from scratch. Hmm. Sure. The next thing that we've created is the dependency view. Now, especially for VHDL, not everyone has as powerful of auto dependency analysis that Blue Pearl has. So we realize sometimes you need to generate a dash F file. Okay. The dash F file can be used for any simulation or synthesis tool out there. And it just gives an accurate define before use dependency analysis of your view. You can also see in this window the analysis that's going on for our real-time background analysis. Yeah. We also can work on files that are incomplete so that you have a partial file, but only a block will be able to read that in. And if it has errors, we can continue on and still create the dependency view. Now, the next view that we've added with HDL Creator is our pre-synthesis RTL view of the design. So rather than seeing top module or entity and the instantiations and the nets and the signals, yeah. which is an important view. Sure. The problem is that when you have a syntax error, you can't get that view at all. Right. Because you can't synthesize the design if it's not able to load. Right. We can actually create, of what we've read in, the RTL view. So you'll see, rather than the instance list, we will see the modules and entities, the process blocks, the procedure calls. You will see the assignments. You will see the case statements. Things that represent code in a block. And you can cross-probe to your editor from there. All right. So, Scott, can you show me an example of this in action? Absolutely. So, what I'm showing you here is Visual Verification Suite's ability to debug and analyze your design quickly. So, from your design in the design browser, you can quickly open up the RTL for a given module, and you can see the various things with it. Now, what we're showing here is the dependency view. In the dependency view, you can see all the files in your design and how they interact with each other. So you can see the packages that are used for any given file, and you can quickly go through your design and open up those package files. The Slock Viewer, as I talked about earlier, gives you a really good representation of where your files are, what IP is needed for your full design. And you can see how it's distributed throughout and what types of lines of code you have. You can also see the issues for any given file built into that embedded editor. And that is throughout our tool. And from any given point, you can actually cross probe into the schematic from the embedded editor. So from here, you can see how easy it was to go from an issue found in the RTL to debug and trace a given schematic and go through multiple pages. Now, one thing that's very important in your design is to look at all the clocks and how they're connected. So we actually have the ability to filter and give you a clock tree view of the design. Very cool. Okay, Scott, so is this an all or nothing kind of deal or can I use the parts of HDL Creator as standalone programs? Absolutely, you can. Because we realize there are times when you need linting. There are times when you want to do your CDC analysis and your SDC analysis. Yeah. But there are other times when you just want to quickly edit a line of code. For sure. So as part of HDL Analyze, our base product, you actually get HDL Creator standalone. 
Okay. As part of HDL Creator Standalone, you get all the analysis for the language. You get full language compliance for everything for test benches through synthesizable code. You get the full editor, formatting, fixing suggestions. You also get all that structural real-time analysis I've talked about. You also get the Slock Viewer and all the views that we've created. All right, Scott, this has been a lot to cover today. So can you recap your main points for me? Sure. The main goal for HDL Creator is to enable linting to go faster by providing it better code. This will also allow further downstream tools like simulation and synthesis and even place and route to run better. You're going to get significant acceleration of your design and verification because you're not finding silly bugs in verification. You're finding them up front as you type. Yeah. No hardware engineer wants to have the verification you're fine, the wrong type of assignment. The best way to learn about any editor is to use it. So go to blueprocom slash downloads and take our starter edition for a test drive. Sounds great. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me, Scott. Thank you. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about HDL Creator from Blue Pearl. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, just head on over to the Chalk Talk section of EE Journal. Can't miss it right across the top. Or check out YouTube, keyword EE Journal.